Hey you guys, got a really cool game to share with you just now. This is just an example of uh, crushing an opponent with tactics. Um, I'm not going to say any more, we'll just go through it. And we Basically, this is just going to be an exercise in tactics. We're going to highlight some ideas, some patterns that you need to be looking out for, whether you're attacking or defending, because tactics work both ways. You need to know how to spot the opportunities, which could also be threats, right? So, we start with my opponent's uh, rated about 12.50, something like that, and he starts with e4, and I play the French e6. So we have d4, d5. So, normally, I tend to find either pawn takes or pawn, pawn advances, so either the exchange variation or the advance variation. He, here, he plays the, the marshal, I think, with um, knight to c3 straight off, and I play the normal c5. Now... We have knight to f3, knight to c6, and now the pawn takes, which is something I generally like to see because it allows my bishop into the game. That My, my dark square bishop is sitting there waiting for white to take that pawn, um, and it really doesn't benefit white in any way. Now he's got a bishop gunning down on f2, which uh, could prove to be a pain for white. So, But now what this does give him is one two, three attackers against d5. So he's going to win a pawn. So he takes, I recapture, and now queen comes in. So, decision time. It would be very easy just to say, okay, let's um, let's exchange queens. The queen's also looking at that bishop, so I'm going to have to do something. So I've really got two, two main possibilities that spring to mind. I've got queen takes queen, or queen to b6, or possibly queen to a5. So in the game, I play queen to b6. I want to keep pieces on the board. I'm higher rated than my opponent, so um, I, I want to keep things interesting and complex if I can. So we don't want to be swapping off queens in the first few moves of the game. Okay, queen now comes back with check. And this is not too, too scary for me. I've got bishop there. I've got knight there. Even potentially dropping that bishop back as well. So obviously... The best of those options is going to be knight to e7. On here it's defended by this bishop, and it's also clearing the space on the back rank for me to castle when I can, and I don't get to do it straight away. Uh, so we have bishop comes out to b5, pinning the knight, and now I notice that I have my queen behind my bishop there, uh, can back it up to go and snatch f2, if you rem remember. So queen there was the best option because it comes with this, this threat. And uh, white missed the threat, threw in a check, I blocked the check. He comes in with a pin, but that doesn't prevent losing a pawn. And now the king is going to have to move. So the king is forced to move to d1 and uh, lose his castling rights. So now what I want to be doing is I want to swarm on that king. So what's the next most forcing move that, that I can throw at white? What would you play in this situation? Well, I play queen back to d8, again with check. So the king can't go here, and obviously can't go anywhere on the, on the d file. Um, this knight cannot um, block, right? And the reason is, because if knight blocks a, yes, it's defended by the queen. And yes, this knight is pinned, right, on the king. So the knight can't recapture, but look at it this way. Knight blocks there, queen takes, so I'm an, um, and then, so I'm a knight up, queen takes, and then knight takes. So I would actually win a knight in that thing, because if knight goes there, queen captures, then queen captures. This this knight is no longer pinned. Okay, so he can't block with that knight, so he finds a better move, blocking with the dark square bishop. And now I come out, I see another opportunity to attack. So when you can attack, 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 your opponent it just has no time to think of plans of his own and to put them into practice, right? It's just another serious threat, because his queen's out in the board, why not attack it? Why not develop a piece, attack the queen, gain a tempo? So now the queen drops back, where it's now attacking this no longer defended bishop. So I just drop the bishop back to b6, 
and now knight comes in. So clearly knight takes knight isn't legal because this knight is pinned to the king. Um, but again, I don't have to be concerned with knight takes knight because I can recapture with a pawn if I want to. So now I can go ahead and castle. So now I'm feeling very good. My king is far more safe than white's king. And um, white's got no pawn structure, really. It's only got five pawns, and they're all still on the, on the uh, back crank on the, in the starting box. So knight takes, and then I figure knight takes is fine. Uh, it's a nice open board. If bishop wants to swap it off itself off my knight, then that would actually suit me just fine. Uh, white doesn't choose that. And instead, I see a tactic. Right, can you see the tactic here? Why did I move my queen to c8? Could it be to add a second defender to the knight? Okay, that's not really necessary. Well, the, the idea is bishop to g4 would pin the queen. So the queen then couldn't move. White would then be forced to play rook to uh, f3, bishop takes rook, maybe queen or pawn takes rook, and I've won the exchange from that. All right, so white spots that. So good move, well done. Um, prevents my bishop from going in there, but now another attack and another serious attack. And this is pretty devastating now, okay? So the knight coming in here, there's nothing there to for a discovery, right? So the knights come in, it's hitting the bishop, it's hitting the queen, and it's also hitting c2. So this is now starting to look pretty severe for white. White's going to have to move that queen. So white moves the queen now to f2. Now, if you saw that move and you're black, there's one key um, factor, the one key kind of light that should go on ping in your head, right? Where has that queen just moved? Okay, what can you see? What potential tactic can you see on the board? All right, yeah, the queen's attacking the bishop, but the bishop's defended twice right now, knight and queen. Okay, the thing that jumps out to me is this threat, right? The queen has just put itself in line with my dark squared bishop. And now there are potential ideas, okay? So, <clears throat> I mean, one idea which would win material could be like knight takes c2. That comes with the discovered attack on the, on the queen. The queen would have to move, but the queen could just grab the bishop. Yeah? Because that, the knight is one of the defenders of the bishop. So that wouldn't really win anything. So I'd get a pawn and then a, a rook, but um, I'd have lost the bishop and I'd probably lose the knight. So that's material's kind of equal. But check this out. Bishop takes c2. Check. Now, um, the bishop is defended, but we still also have this potential discovery. And one thing to try and start to develop in your tactical thinking is to spot the potential for a discovery, a pin, a fork, a check, something like that. And then to say to, say to yourself, is this the right time to unleash that tactic? Or is there something else I need to do to prepare for it? Or is there something else that I can maybe combine it with that's going to make it winning or devastating for my opponent? Right? You don't have to play every card that you, that you get, okay? So, um, white is now in check and uh, cannot capture the bishop. So white only has two moves. This, this is out of bounds because of the knight. So the king is either going to have to go there or he's going to have to go there. Clearly this one could walk into a rook check, right? But c1 is even more devastating. Can you spot the final move now that uh, causes white to resign? It's a classic tactic. 
and it's a combination of two things. So we've already talked about the potential of the discovery. Okay, so all we have to do is move this knight. Now we could, for example, capture the bishop and then the queen would have to move and then we could maybe capture the knight so we'd probably win a piece. But that's not the most aggressive or devastating move. The move that won the game is knight to b3 check so the king is in check and it comes with an attack on the queen. So whatever happens now, and when a king is in check by a, a knight, it either has you either have to capture the piece, which black which white certainly can do here, or the king has to move. And the king can't move. So the only legal move now for white would be uh, a takes b3, and then we would have bishop takes queen, and it's pretty much over from that point. So I just found that a really fascinating game. For some reason I was able to land punch after punch after punch and, and White never really got a foothold in, in the game at all. So just really, really satisfying. And it also shows, I think, the the benefit that when you can maintain the pressure, very, very important when you're playing gambit lines, right, where you've sacrificed material in order to gain the initiative in a game. Um, when you get the opportunity to do that, it's a useful skill to say, OK, now what can I do now to rock my opponent again, to put him on his heels again? Keep going. So just a lot of fun. Thought I'd share it with you. Thanks for watching. See you soon.